okay so <clears throat> so in the last class you might have, you you know that we you know the recording was uh, there was some problem with the internet connection as in the last time so what i did was i recorded the thing so i hope you must have seen this part of the uh, uh, this part of the lecture and uh, yes. you, and you must have also yes, realized sir. that depending upon the depending upon the terminals like from where we are observing uh, you know our resistances uh, all uh, the topology always change and it becomes different for different viewing angle so if you are viewing uh, from this side or if you are viewing from this side so uh, the the main uh, idea of showing this example was to uh, make you aware of uh, the things like from where you are actually seeing from which terminal you are actually observing somewhere down the line this concept will be keep on repeating in our uh, you know in our lectures when we will be discussing more advanced theorems but uh, this will actually you know uh, uh, is more than enough to make you realize that always the resistances changes whenever you see it from some different terminals in the network so uh, in particular when uh, when i was doing this uh, uh, this part where c and d were uh, you know taken as the taken as the terminals and we wanted to see like what effective resistance we will be getting when we are you know observing across this c and d then we realized you know there is a topology which is coming like this and this is basically a bit little bit tough to you know solve because somewhere down the line you cannot see whether the resistances are in parallel or in series so in order to you know solve this particular type of uh, you know situation where you get something like this we have a very you know uh, uh, basic and very fundamental transformation i don't know whether you have studied in your school or not but uh, <coughs> that transformation is called as delta star transformation so what it does is it tries to you know simplify these type of situations where we have a delta formation so you can see here we have a you know a delta type of stuff going on here so what we call this as is a delta so we try to you know simplify this by using a delta star transformation so let's discuss that first and then we will come back to this uh, example and uh, try to solve it so that uh, you know everything will be complete after that so today's class is actually lecture 6 so <clears throat> let me write it down here so this is lecture 6 today and uh, what we are discussing today is uh, you know star delta transformation star delta transformation so let us see what that is and how it will help us to solve the problem which we were facing in our last lecture so what happens is you know if you have a situation where let me draw this diagram first so we have a situation where you have uh, uh, resistances arranged in this fashion so let me call this as r31 and r12 r23 this is your uh, terminal 1 this is your terminal 3 and this is your terminal 2 so as you can see here uh, the naming of the resistances are done in such a way that by observing that you can realize that uh, in between which terminals these resistances are so if i am writing r31 means it's a resistance connecting between 3 and 1 so namings are done in such a fashion so this is basically a delta delta network because it look like it's it's looking like a greek delta which we use in mathematics so it's coming from there so it's a delta network so it looks like this and the other one which we are calling as star looks like this this is r1 and then you have r3 then you have here r2 and this is your terminal 2 this is your terminal 3 and this is your terminal one let me draw it clearly here so so that it should look like a star so this is your r2 and this is your terminal 2 so as you can see uh, by looking here it looks like a star so they say it's a star terminal uh, star network and this point actually is a neutral point when you go in higher studies when you will understand you know you will understand this this comes in uh, you know 
three phase networks and all that stuff which we do in our you know home wiring system so this is normally uh, a neutral system but do not worry about it this is just for your information we do not need this point but just to tell you that this is a neutral system which is denoted by capital N so we do not need it here but still uh, worth mentioning so now the important thing is what we want to have is we want to you know transform uh, a network which looks like this to a network which looks like this so in order to transform these uh, networks to move from this side to this side what we effectively want we effectively want that if i see the effective resistance between the terminal 1 and 2 so let us say if i want to see a effective resistance between terminal 1 and 2 so whatever effective resistance i get by looking into terminal 1 and 2 i should get the same effective resistance looking in from terminal 1 and 2 in this network so if i equate the two effective resistances from this network to this network then will you all agree that uh, then uh, there will be a matching in these transformation yes sir so <clears throat> so what we yes, want to sir. do now is uh, we want to look into the terminals 1 and 2 and we want to calculate the effective resistance in between 1 and 2 here and then we want to calculate the effective resistance here in between 1 and 2 here and we want to equate the two because we want these two networks to be of equal strength so <laughs> if, if so can anyone tell me what will be the effective resistance in between 1 and 2 in the delta network R12 into R31 plus R23 divided by R12 into R31 into R23. Uh, I think the numerator is right, but not the denominator. R1. R1 no, no, you tell me. R12 and R31 in each series. R31 plus R23 upon R12 plus R23 plus R3. Yeah. So, so I think a majority of you, I guess, know, but still I will repeat it for the rest of the class. So here, if you see. When you look into terminal one and two, what you observe? So let us draw this diagram just to uh, just to make all of you, you know, be on the same page. So if I am drawing one and two terminal this side, so we can see how many paths are there to reach from one to two. So there is one path which is actually R one two, and the other path is actually going through the series resistance of R three one and R two three. So as easy as that. So there are two paths of going from uh, 1 to 2 so I have listed it down here so you can see that these two are in series and then it's in parallel with R12 so the effective resistance is uh, the effective resistance that you will get is uh, R12 in parallel with R31 in series with R23 so this is basically the effective resistance when you see it from terminal 1 and 2 and when you see it in terminal 1 and 2 in the star network it is very easy right it's r1 plus r2 because you are you, you want to see how many paths are going from 1 to 2 you can see only single path is going there is no path from this side if you go from this side there you cannot go to 2 so the only way to get to 2 is r1 plus r2 so what you can do now is you can actually equate the two so so this is for looking into effective resistance of when you are looking from terminal 1 and Similarly, if you do it for looking from uh, terminal 2 and 3 are effective when you are looking from terminal 2 and 3 that will be actually you can calculate it's very easy as sim and it's somewhat you know an easy exercise so there is no point in, uh, in explaining that again because it will be a same story. So this is the effective resistance that you will see in the delta network when you are going from looking in 2 and 3 network 2 and 3 terminal and in the star it will be R3 plus R2 like this. Similarly, if you go for terminal 1 and 3, then uh, for the delta network, what you will get is uh, you will get R31 parallel R2 plus R23. And then on the right side in the star network, it will be R1 plus R3. <coughs> so now you have actually three equations and you want to uh, calculate a relationship between R1 and the corresponding you know transformations uh, uh, you want to calculate this value of R1 in terms of these values 
So if you solve all of these equations, right? So if you solve all of these equations together, so what you will get as the answer is that R1 is nothing but R31 R12 divided by R12 plus R23 uh, plus R31. Similarly, R2 will be R12 R23 over R12 R23 plus R31. And R3 will be R23 R31 over R12 plus R23 plus R31. So what you observe here is these uh, resistances which you are getting in the star network, you are representing it in terms of the resistances in the delta network. So what you observe is the denominator is same for all of these three you know, values that you are calculating for the star resistance. But numerator keeps on changing and uh, it's easy to remember for the numerator like for example if you want to calculate r1 so what you do is you uh, you you are actually uh, you know putting let us say like this so this is what you want to calculate r2 and then you have uh, r2 here r3 this side so if you want to calculate this r1 then what you have to do you have to see that which resistances are connected to this node of r1 and the two are this one and this one. So you have to multiply these two together and add up all the resistances in the denominator. So you will get R1. So R1 is basically R31 times R12 in the numerator which is over here. Similarly for R2 it is R12, R23. So that means R12 and R23. So this R2 is connected to this node. So you have to calculate the multiplication of the resistances this one this one and divide by the others all the sum similarly for r3 so there is no magic about it so everything is symmetrical so you can calculate yourself and if you want to do the other way around that if you have a star and you want to calculate the delta then you can also do that and the transformation uh, equation looks like this that is r12 is basically r1 plus r2 plus r1 r2 divided by r3 then you have R23 as R2 plus R3 plus R2 R3 divided by R1. And then you have R31 as R1 plus R3 plus R1 R3 divided by R2. So this also is very easy like if you want to calculate R12, if you want to calculate this R12, uh, if you want to calculate this R12, that is basically what? It is basically the end resistances of this uh, resistance. So end terminal. So whatever resistances are connected to the terminal end of this resistor. So at this terminal, R1 is connected. At this terminal, R2 is connected. So you have to actually add these two resistances. So that is here, R1 and R2. And then you have to make the product of the two in the numerator and then divide by the third one. So you have to, you know, do this transformation in order to convert from star to delta. So these are the equations for doing that. So if we want to, uh, you know, sim if you want to solve for this particular thing, so what we can do is we can, you know, we can uh, put a star delta transformation like this here in between. So if you do that, the star delta transformation like this, then you will all agree and you can calculate yourself also. So it, it's a very easy exercise. So what you will find out is that this value will be 4 by 3. This value will be 16 by 3. And this value will be 8 by 15. You can do that. So this, so what I've done is I have actually converted the lower delta into a star. And once we have this, we can, you know, remove this. We can actually remove this because this is not needed now. So it's gone and this is also gone. So once both some so once everything is gone, now you can see it's very easy, right? So what we have is we have a series resistance of these two, we have a series resistance of these two, then we have a parallel combination of these two, and then the whatever result you will get, you can add it to the series of the last resistance which is in the bottom. So what you can get now is a effective resistance looking from the terminal C and D from this side. So this is the way 
you have to do a star data transformation for the networks so uh, so you can you know I, I hope you understand what I, what I was trying to explain here so this is the way you have to solve the circuits whenever you observe some delta and stars in between so so this is I hope uh, um, you understood what I was trying to say here so today we will start with a new topic which is basically controlled sources so this I am pretty sure that you people might not be knowing from your school because in schools I think th this is not covered so so today sir yes please. Uh, yeah you have lecture 6 me nahi likhna hai ya lecture 5 okay, okay. Hai. yeah sorry thanks okay so let me close this <clears throat> so now uh, today we will discuss controlled sources so basically controlled sources are of four different types let me write that first so first one is voltage controlled voltage source then we have again voltage controlled current source now uh, the third one is current controlled voltage source and then we have current controlled current source so we normally abbreviate them as VCVS so what we are doing we are actually taking the first initials of all these words and then we are abbreviating it as VCVS the second one is voltage controlled current source so VCCS then we have current controlled voltage source abbreviated from the first word uh, you know we are taking the first word of these uh, words first um, uh, thing so now I think the, the fourth one is current controlled current source so these are the four variants that we have in circuit theory and you might be saying like what's the what's the need of all this we will explain you all of it so that there will be no confusion later on so so let us discuss first the first one which is voltage controlled voltage source so what is this exactly so first of all you already you are aware of this term which is voltage source so you know that you must have seen that there is a voltage source like this V0 so you, you have seen in your schools like you know there is a battery which is having a voltage of V0 so these type of uh, elements you are already aware of but now there are some situations where you know um, things are different actually what happens is you know uh, this voltage V0 is not fixed but it depends upon the so it depends upon some other voltage so for example uh, let me let me draw the diagram here so let us say you have two terminals uh, uh, here so first is this side so let's say we have you know terminals a b and terminals c and d so these are the two four terminals uh, present in a network and uh, uh, you know what happens is there is a voltage source and all these all these controlled sources are actually drawn using this symbol triangles uh, you know uh, this rhombus so we try to you know draw it like this using this symbol so whenever you see this it's a control source so now important thing now is first of all uh, you have to see that once we are discussing vcvs so first of all what you have to see is uh, this term so it's a voltage source actually so if it is a voltage source then this must be plus minus stuff so something like a voltage but now what you have to see what i have to see is the second one which is a voltage controlled so basically what is this voltage source this is a voltage source whose voltage is controlled by some other voltage so that is important so it's control this voltage is controlling this voltage source so let us say if you have a voltage here of value v1 in between a and b then this voltage will keep changing on the uh, keep changing on depending upon this value of v1 so if this v1 changes this voltage source will change in earlier case whenever you you, you had this type of battery the voltage v0 was assumed to be fixed and it's not changing but here in these control sources what happens 
it these voltages are controlled by some other voltage generated at some different part of the circuit so here if you have a voltage generated in between these two terminals as v1 then this voltage is represented by k v1 so what is k k is basically a factor like 2 3 4 or 5 it depends like it's it can be 0 0.1 0 0.2 also so there is no constraint on k but the important thing is you know k is actually a factor which is multiplying it with k1 uh, v1 so it's so so it's basically a amplification which is going on so if you have a v1 of value 1 then this is a 2 volt voltage source and if the value of v1 changes then also the voltage source value will change so this is basically a voltage source of uh, of uh, vcd that is the voltage connected in between the terminal c and d and it can be represented as this so what happens is you know you can see here this is the uh, voltage which is controlling the vcd voltage so if this changes this will change <coughs> and uh, the units of k are unitless there are there is no unit of k because if you if you bring down this vab here so voltage by voltage is gone and k is a unitless quantity that's why i was saying it says 2 or 3 or 4 or anything no no constraint on this so normally you might feel that what's the point of uh, you know discussing all these networks it looks like very hypothetical but the problem is you know these type of uh, uh, control sources are used extensively when you go for more higher courses like you know electric electronic circuits and all that because somewhere down the line uh, uh, they will be used to model they will be used to model advanced circuits like bjt mosfets so i don't want to go into the details but you must have seen the diodes thing diode is a very typical one which you have seen in your uh, schools but i don't know whether you have seen these type of circuits like bjt and uh, then we have mosfets these things you are not aware of but these are the practical practical uh, circuit practical devices which are used in your iPhones and uh, you know Android phones so whatever electronic circuits you have you have all these uh, all these uh, typical components there in that or the chip diagram that I had shown you in lecture one so in that chip you have all these uh, components so these components are you know modeled using uh, this type of uh, strategy so I don't want to go into the details but these things are very important for your you know building up your you know logic for understanding these devices so these this is basically called as voltage controlled voltage source another one is voltage controlled current source so what it means is uh, let me copy this so if it is a voltage controlled current source then all of you will agree that the only thing that will change is uh, you will have a diamond as such because now it's a current source so it will be like this so it's a uh, indication of current source but now it is controlled by a voltage generated at the other part of the terminal so it's a control source and you are writing it by you know i let us say so the units of this particular stuff will be what can anyone tell what will be the units of k huh? one by r yes so oh, it's a siemens right one or by r. Mo. Mo, mo. One by r one by r ohm one upon omega yeah yeah ohm inverse ya conductivity conductivity yeah so we call this as we call this as conductance Men. we call this as conductance note that we are calling it as transconductance not conductance please note why we are calling it as transconductance we are calling it as transconductance because the current is actually generated at cd current is generated here in this terminal cd but the voltage is generated at ab at ab so that's why we are not calling it as conductance we are calling it as transconductance because it is actually transferring the voltage from this terminal to this terminal that's why we are calling this k as transconductance and not conductance in resistances we call that as conductance because the resistance the voltages and the currents are related to the same uh, you know terminal uh, 
can you please mute your voice okay am i audible yes sir yes sir okay. yes sir so the thing is uh, here if you see we call this as conductance here so when we write g which is a conductance which is equal to 1 by r we call it as conductance because the voltage and the currents are in the same terminal here it's different so that's why we call it as transconductance because it's a transfer of conductance from this port to this port that's why okay so this is basically voltage controlled current source now the third one is current controlled voltage source so that is also uh, you know a simple one now so you have a diamond now it's uh, basically uh, now it's like this so here you will have a short circuit or maybe some other you know uh, thing uh, just to explain you i am shorting it out but we will see some examples so it's a current which is flowing in one of the branches maybe a short not there maybe a resistance here so we don't care but ideal representation is in this way so here you have a voltage source and now here you will be doing what here the voltage is actually controlled by ix so ix is the current flowing in the ab terminal in between ab terminal so this is your r and this r has a this r has a, uh, a units of trans resistance it's a trans resistance so by you know because units of this r is ohms but it's trans ohms because you are transferring the uh, you know current from one branch to voltage in the other branch so that's why this trans is coming because of that but the units of r will be ohms and the fourth one is current controlled current source so that is also simple so it, you have a current flowing here in this terminal ab and then you have a diamond because it's a controlled source so what happens is it will also be a current which is beta i and i is the current flowing in the left side of the branch and the units of beta will be unitless so there will be no units for beta because it is transferring the current from one branch to the other branch and scaling it by a factor of beta so these are the uh, basic concepts for uh, this so let us solve a few examples on this so that uh, we'll be all uh, you know comfortable with what i was trying to say here so let us say sir, can you show uh, like yeah the previous sir. slide a little bit the like last portion yeah sir i have doubt that yeah. how this uh, devices are controlled by other source like yeah yeah so once i'll give you an example then you will come to know this okay we are about to start that so you will be comfortable after that okay <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Sir, the basic idea of this all is that when we want an, an a voltage or current which is a factor of another voltage so we use this no 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 it's not like that because somewhere down the line you can do it using the resistors also right you can use a voltage divider and then you can get a voltage out which is a factor of these resistances no the idea of these are different the idea of these are you know they are basically uh, modeling uh, something as an something like for example as an amplifier so whenever you speak something in a mic you must be knowing it like when you are you know uh, doing some uh, auditions or maybe you are doing some speech you are speaking in a mic so you know the way you speak it is amplified and people you know uh, listen listen to it in a very large you know the voice is you know little big yes. and the reason for that is you know inside that amplifier what happens is you have this that particular stuff so what happens is when your voice let us say uh, your voice is uh, a sine omega t a 100 millivolt sine omega t uh, a small you know uh, a sine signal so what happens is uh, at the loud speaker what happens is because of the because of the amplifiers which are built by using these active devices i don't want to go into detail of this but because of these things uh, which are modeled like this yes, sir i got the point got that okay. my my voice uh, the amplifier the sound will depend upon my voice if i speak a yeah. little louder the amplifier will yeah so that is actually louder. by this k this k factor so okay. the more you you know loud you will be the more loud will it, the the k will be amplifying that thing okay 
so this yes, is the sir. this is the thing so somewhere down the line all these uh, all these uh, things which i am showing over here are useful and they are useful. please mute your mic so everyone uh, whenever you uh, ask questions after that just mute <laughs> okay so sir, yeah sir, sir can we consider transformer as voltage controlled voltage source see regarding the transformer things i have not discussed it right now so please do not bring all these topics here right now but the thing is they can be volt they can be used as uh, uh, all these uh, active devices like the ones which i have showing you here but you have to wait for that to start okay do not bring in that concepts here okay guys okay sir the voltage source or current source on the right side are active components uh, which one you are saying these ones these ones ha ah, yes sir uh no it's not active components but they are actually modeling the active components which i was telling here this ones so what you are doing you are actually modeling these by using these uh, uh components which are here so they depend upon the uh, you know voltage generated on the other side so somewhere down the line they are uh, you know they are generating as well as absorbing power so both of them is there so yeah you can say that a sort of they are active components because they are generating as well as absorbing sir uh, here beta is positive or negative means it depends or you can always say that beta is positive like sin no no beta can be the thing is you know uh, uh, what happens is uh, there is no constraint on these beta values it can be i guess negative so the thing is if it is negative what max it will create is you know the damage the direction of the current will flip up you understand so so that will only affect the direction so somewhere down the line it doesn't uh, you know matter so there is no specific constraint on beta so if it is negative it flips out even if this current which i am defining in this direction if suppose this flips up or to you know to the upside value then definitely you know you have defined this current i based on this direction but when you flip this up it will also flip so so the thing is because it's dependent on that it will also flip but beta is a scaling factor which is normally you know they take it as positive it cannot be negative i guess so i think negative is not possible so it uh, whatever flipping of the currents will happen it happens because of the value of i which you are calculating from the other port side yes, sir uh, both the currents cannot be in opposite direction sorry like one from a to b and second from b to c like opposite direction both the current will be in opposite direction current will be in the opposite direction no the see the depend the thing is it's important to note that if your current is defined like this and if your you know uh, control source is defined like this let us say then Uh, if you change uh, this current which is on the left side if you if your calculated current becomes negative and if it's going like this then this will also uh, change the direction of this will also change so it will go like this because we had already defined i in this direction but because it flipped out so this will also flip because uh, it's dependent upon this current okay so uh, don't worry i'm trying to solve some questions uh, for this you, uh, your doubts will be cleared once uh, we do that so let us say if you have a voltage source like this of value 2 volts and then you have a resistor and then you have a 14 ohm resistor and this is a 2 ohm resistor and then you have a uh, you know dependent source which is this so this is 2 ohm so what we do is and oh yeah and the important thing is this v1 which i am writing here is dependent upon this v1 here and see the signs of this v1 so it is defined in this way so note that if these sign changes this voltage polarity will also change so let us uh, calculate the current flowing in this so the current flowing in this will be what it is 2 as we are going from minus to plus then we have minus 2 ohms times i1 i1 let us say the current flowing and then minus 14 i1 and then you have minus 2 v1 and then it's equal to 0 so this is the first uh, kvl that we are writing in this loop and then you know the relation between v1 and i1 for this particular uh, you know thing here so you know already that v1 is related to uh, 2 ohms resistance by 2 times i1 so once you have this equation which you obtained from here and this one you wrote it from kvl then you can easily you know substitute the value of v1 
in this equation to get the value of I1. So whatever answer you will get, that I1 will be actually 0.1 amperes. So, so this way you can you know solve the questions uh, for various uh, dependent sources where you know your voltage is actually as somebody was asking how it is generated. So you can see here that this voltage source has a value of V1 and this V1 is generated by the current flowing in this resistance uh, that's value of 2 ohm. So that generation of the, the voltage generated here will actually affect the voltage here. So, so this is the first question and then yeah. yes. Can we say that this uh, circuit behaves as a, uh, sorry, that resistor behaves as a variable uh, resistor? Which resistor? This one? Yeah, because if we change the voltage, then the resistance would also change and this resistance would also change. So. No, but the thing is, how will you change the voltage here? Sir, by changing the net uh, total EMF. That. Where is this EMF coming Tot here? Sir, sorry, that two voltage return no? total voltage yeah so somewhere down the line if you change this everything will change right uh, currents will also change it will it will be different so how come resistance is changing here resistance is fixed right two ohms yes sir okay so sir yes sir sir can you please repeat this example okay so the thing is you know you write a kvl right so i think this equation is you are okay with this or not yes sir okay with this yeah so this is uh, this is the kvl because we wrote it and we understood how to write kvls uh, in our earlier lecture but the second thing is you know if you try to solve this equation you have two unknowns here one is i1 and another one is v1 so only equation one equation is there but two unknowns so we want one more equation to solve for this particular circuit so what we observe is you can see here we are having this resistance and the voltage across this resistance is V1. And we know that a current I1 flows into this resistance. Then we can have a relation between V1 and I1, which is basically V is equal to I into R. So this relation we got from this particular thing. And why we are using specifically this resistor? Because this V1 which is notified here is affecting this voltage to V1. So that whatever relation we can get from here can be substituted here which in turn means can be substituted here so once you once you solve for you know when you put this value here you will get all the all this equation in terms of i and then you can solve for i1 right so this is the current which you will get and the corresponding voltage you will get is 2 times uh, 0.1 which is 0.2 volts you can get like that okay sir yes. Yes. Sir, can you define this V1? That what to take as V1? This V1 I've already defined here, right? Plus to minus. It's already defined. Not like, not like that way. If there are many resistance in parallel and one in series. Where like are many way. where are in, where where are you finding the resistances in parallel here? No, sir. That V1, how to define that V1? That this is only V1. This is already given in the question that the voltage across this 2 ohms is V1. Okay, okay. Sir. Okay. Given in the question. Note that. Okay. Okay. And so the signs are also given. Yes, signs will question. also be given. Right. Okay, sir. Okay, so let me uh, solve one more question for you. Uh, just a second. I will see where it is. Okay. Let me solve it for you. Uh, so let us say you have a just a minute. You have a two amperes current source like this. Then you have a three ohms resistance, and then you have a, a, a four i one like this, and then you have a two ohms resistance like this. So if you want to, and this I1 is already given to be like this, you know, the direction is given, note that down, the direction is already given to you, it's like this. So you have to, you have to, you know, fix your concepts on this, that once the direction is given already in the exam, so uh, direction of this is al always set. So if you calculate the value of I1 as negative, then this will also flip. 
so just keep that in mind so here it's very easy to do it because if you write a kcl here at node a if you write kcl here so the currents which are going inside the node a are 2a plus 4i1 these are the currents which are going inside and what we are saying is let us uh, take the other currents that are 2 ohms and 3 ohms going outside so it's basically equal to i1 plus i2 so see i1 is already going outside so we cannot change that and for i2 we are assuming that it's going out so so the equation that you get is this one so here what you get as the things are like you know you get 2 plus 4 i1 so i'll bring i1 to the left side so what i'll get is 3 i1 equal to i2 so this is the first equation that i'll get so here we have again two unknowns and you know only single equation so the other equation that you can write down in this is that if you see this node if you see this node and if you want to calculate the potential of this node VA with respect to ground because uh, you know always the potentials are relative potentials so if I am saying that we have to calculate the potential with respect to A that is with respect to ground here then what will how will you calculate it you can calculate it uh, in this circuit uh, in this uh, resistance you can see the current I1 is going down so the value of VA at this point will be 3 I1 3 I1 and how about at this point it will be what if i want to calculate va two going I like two so 2i2 two two. so I and two. you know that and you know that this is a single point so you cannot have two potentials at this single wire as i told you in the short circuit this is the short right so uh, every every point here will have same potential so so this means this equation may this equals this so you can calculate 3i1 is equal to 2i2 by using that constraint and once you solve this two equations then what you will get is i2 as minus two. minus 2 and minus two. 2 so i2 will be minus 2 and how about i1 what will be the value of i1 minus 4 by 3 minus minus 4 by three. yes so i1 is minus 4 by 3 so this means what this means your current is actually flowing like this and your dependent source is flowing like this so you can you can uh, you can redraw that because your current calculated is actually against the current which was given in the question so it's 4 by 3 like this and you can flip the direction of the current source also like this so so this is sir, yes sir, i did not understand the uh, working of that control source uh, work by working means what from so the like what is new about what is new about this uh, in the circuit itself. So the new thing about like this. Now in question we are uh, yeah, yeah, taking please. it like uh, only a current is flowing through that wire. Okay. No, no. The thing is a new thing about this particular uh, element is earlier whatever current sources that you had were fixed current sources, right? You already had 2 amperes so 2 amperes was always flowing, you know, from, from this node to this node. But here there is a dependency on the current flowing in some different branch so that dependency actually helps out in you know modeling the uh, actual circuits because right now here if you are seeing you are not observing any benefits but the benefits of these things comes as i was telling you again these things are used for modeling the actual circuits actual circuits which you will study in electronic devices you will realize the importance of these uh, you know diamond circles later on once you go to higher courses because right now here in this course we are only dealing with you know solving uh, these type of situations but later on when you will actually try to solve all these uh, you know circuits you then you will realize that you have to model them with this and then you know that you have already done these type of circuits in your uh, this course then you can easily calculate the uh, you know required uh, uh, you know um, voltage gain or current gain uh, for these type of circuits here so you will realize these importance later but right now here you keep stick to it that this is for uh, you know circuit theory class and uh, you have to solve these type of questions okay sir okay yeah. 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 hello 2 plus 3 4 i1 is equal to i1 plus i2 is what you are asking Yes, sir. How you know? This is basically based on the KCL that we have applied at node A. So whatever current is going in nodes A, 
we are actually making them equal to the currents leaving the node so you can see here we have 4 i1 current which is leaving the node we have i2 current which is leaving the node so we are summing that up and we are making it equal to the currents which are actually going inside the node you understand sir but the current coming outside is 4 i1 plus no no thing is we have changed it right now so you see this original originally it was like this okay so here you see the 4 ampere is going inside right and this is also going inside yes yes okay and the i1 was defined going outside and this we defined outside okay so these two are summed up and sir, they are made equal to that have you means you find that 2 ampere will go in a only like uh, some part of 2 ampere will go in i1 like it breaks at more no that, that is one. yeah that is there but you know in order to you know there are multiple ways of doing all this stuff you can do it as your ease like you know you can take i1 like this then you can go to i1 2 minus i1 and all that type of stuff i do not go by that approach yeah. so until sir, but sir. If you take a loop like uh, the first loop and apply kcl there then we will get a value of i1 as 2 by 3 ampere who said it will get to the value of 2 by 3 means like sir if we take loop like 2 minus uh, no see i'll points. tell you one thing uh, the most important thing that i am trying to tell you here is there are multiple ways of solving these circuits depending upon your convenience but the one important point that i am telling here is the answer will come out to be same it will not be different and i am not forcing you to solve by my way of doing it but what i try to do is i try to give you very simplified approach of solving it rather than making it complex the way you are telling is like you know 2 and 2 minus i i do not go by that approach so if you are comfortable with that approach you can use that also and but the answer will come out to be the same that is for sure so there will be no discrepancy in that but i do not go into all that type of different methods and i am not discussing all of them here i will be going with the way i solve it and in case you find it troublesome in you know understanding that you can ask me for that okay no sir means you want to you want to go like this yes yes you cannot do you cannot say that 2 ampere will completely flow here first of all so you cannot say it's 6 volts first of all and second thing is you cannot write a kvl at this node because you are, you can as i was telling you earlier also because it's a current source so current source has a you know you know a characteristics which look like this and the problem with the current source is you do not know which potential it has because you cannot write a specific value of v here you understand so kvl is not possible in this type of situations where you have a current source like that okay sir is it necessary that current dependent source must be in parallel no 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 there are multiple combinations no point in you know there is no hard and fast it can be anywhere no point in you know you can have something like this also so there is no constraint on that that it has to be always in parallel we will see some circuits where we have current dependent sources like this also in between the nodes okay there is no specific uh, constraint <clears throat> okay so so this uh, uh, these two examples were to give you a quick uh, uh, feel of what current sources are and what what these dependent sources are and how they are you know solved and i have given you these two examples the first one giving you a very simplified one and the second one shows you uh, that these currents if you calculate the other way around then the directions will also change so it tries to illustrate that point so once we uh, you know now we are comfortable if we are comfortable with this so now i am heading towards uh, a new topic uh, in our course and what that is called as nodal analysis so this is a very important topic because somewhere down the line this will be useful for most of the later advanced courses that you will be going through in electronics devices so uh, please uh, you know pay step specific focus on this because it's one of the important uh, uh, things uh, now because we are actually starting with circuit theory Uh, to be precise from now onwards because earlier was a mixture of both like you already knew or some things you don't know but now uh, things are you know actually starting uh, 
as per the you know importance like so this is the very important uh, analysis that i am trying to show here so the nodal, nodal analysis is nothing but it's basically somewhere down the line you are actually doing kcl that is kirch of uh, current law in all the nodes so you are trying to uh, do that and you try to simplify the stuff and try to make things easier for you to solve uh, circuits so let me show you one of the circuit and uh, then you will realize what i am trying to say so right now i am dealing with circuits that are having resistors and current sources so what i am doing i am actually dealing with resistors and current sources right now and then we will see the variations so let me let me draw the circuit here so let us say you have a current source i1 like this then you have a resistance let us say r1 then you have a resistance here r2 you have r3 r4 and now you have r5 and then there is one more current source here which is i2 this side so let us say we have a circuit which looks like this so first of all i think you must be all aware of the things uh, uh, all aware of the node that we, I, we we discussed last time so if you recall then this is actually one of the nodes of this circuit because you have you know three different branches and connecting uh, at a single point so this is first then you have a second node this side then you have a third node this side so based on the same uh, definition of the node which i was telling you last time where you have number of branches connecting to the uh, you know a single point so that are defined as node and there is another node which is four here so normally what happens is uh, uh, basically where the number of connections are large and are connecting together we normally take it as ground so this is basically the ground node which we are telling and this is also also called as reference node so the main objective of nodal analysis is the main advantage or maybe you can say objective of this particular stuff is that you you in these type of uh, nodal analysis what you do is you actually calculate the voltages at these nodes voltages at these node that is at node 1 at node 2 and node 3 so as you all know that we calculate the voltage with respect to something so it's a potential difference so once we have taken once we have taken this as our reference ground node so when i am saying v1 it is basically v1 with respect to node 4 when i am saying v2 it's basically v2 with respect to node 4 when i am saying v3 it's v3 with respect to node 4 but since node 4 is zero so it basically becomes same as this because it's uh, zero here so so that that so so what we do is we actually connect the node which has maximum number of connections as ground for nodal analysis that is the first point that i wanted to emphasize here and the second important point that i want to emphasize is suppose if you get these values of voltages here so if you get let us say Uh, 2 volts for example answer here then if you get 3 volt answer here and if you get 4 volt answer here for these nodes if you get these values then will you all agree that it's very simple to calculate the currents flowing in these branches because yes, sir. because yes, if you sir. know 2 volts yes, yes, the current flowing in yes, this sir. will be 2 by r1 if you if you calculate the potential here if you calculate the potential here then it's very easy to calculate the current flowing in this this is 3 minus 2 divided by r this is 2 this is 3 divided by r3 so every point you can calculate the current but uh, for that you have to calculate the potentials at these nodes first so so the idea of nodal analysis is to calculate these node voltages that's why the name nodal comes up so let us uh, let us uh, try to see how we can do this and how we can make it fast also so we will do uh, both these uh, studies Uh, first making uh, un first understanding it and then generalizing it so that we can write these equations very fast so we can so we have to do both of them so so what happens is in this case uh, let us consider node 1 this one in this node what you assume here is that every time when you write kcl at these nodes you have to assume that the current is leaving that node that is the first assumption that you will make so so what we will do we will assume that the currents are leaving this particular node here but here because this particular is a 
depend this particular is a controlled this one is the control, current source we cannot we cannot say that this is leaving because this is always injecting into it we cannot force it to leave so so this one we have to take as such the direction of it has to be taken as such if it is going inside we will take it as inside so but the other things uh, we have to assume that they are leaving so for example for this let me write it as i1 and let me write this as let us say i11 so if i assume that currents are leaving node 1 then by kcl you can easily write it as i1 plus i11 equal to capital i1 or so let me uh, uh, remove confusion by uh, writing it as uh, ia and uh, this one as ib so 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 this is basically uh, writing kcl at node 1 so if anyone has any question here can ask me this is a very uh, simplified way of you know writing kcl at node 1 now what I will do is I will write it in terms of node voltages because we are doing nodal analysis. So I1 can be represented as V1 divided by R1. What is I11 can be represented as? It can be represented as V1 minus V2 divided by R2. And then this is equal to IA. Any question here with this? No, sir. So, so this is, uh, okay. So now what I will do is, I can represent uh, 1 by R as conductances. So please note, if things are 1 by R, it is very, you know, easy to, you know, write in terms of conductances and conductances, I am representing it by capital G. So I can rewrite this equation as V1, G1 plus V1 minus V2 times G2 equal to IA. And then what I will do is I will collect the terms of V1. So V1 is nothing but it's G1 plus G2 and then for v2 it is minus v2 g2 equal to ia so as simple as that so what i have done is i have just moved the things around here and there now for node 2 this node in this node again note that i will be assuming the currents are leaving this node now so what i will say is let us say you have i21 leaving here then you have i22 Two leaving this side and then we'll have i23 leaving this side so now i will write kcl at node 2 and that will be actually nothing but i21 plus i22 plus i23 equal to 0 and note there is nothing here because there is no current like this going inside this node it's just simple branch current so that's why we are assuming all the branch currents to be leaving so that's why it's summed up and equal to 0 Sir, yes. Sir, before analyzing node two, can we just first analyze uh, node three so that it is easy to analyze at node no, two? No, no, no. See, the thing is, it's not about uh, uh, analyzing first node, second node, or third node, or uh, any order. Because what we will be doing is, we will be uh, giving importance to all these nodes at the same time. We will not give importance to any specific node first. We, uh, in nodal analysis, what we do is, we give importance to all the nodes, and we do not care about like which part of the circuit is easy to solve and from there we will move forward not like that okay okay so in node 2 if everybody agrees with this equation then what we can do is we can write it in terms of the voltages so uh, i21 can be easily represented as v2 by r3 so i will write in terms of conductance now so it will be v2 g3 and then i22 will be v2 minus v3 times uh, g4 and then i23 will be v2 minus v1 times g2 equal to 0 so if anyone has any questions with this particular equation you can ask me <clears throat> so now i will collect the v1 terms first so v1 g2 then i will collect v2 terms so it is uh, g3 plus g4 plus g2 and then i will collect minus uh, the v3 terms and v3 term has g4 only so this is the uh, second equation so first equation is this second equation is this when we wrote it for node 2 for node 3 what will be the equation node 3 will have uh, let us say this this and this so uh, let it let me write it as i31 and then this is i32 then you can write 
node 3 equation as current entering the node is IB and the others are leaving so it is I3 1 plus I3 2 you can write it like that and uh, once you once you have done this then I3 1 can be written as V3 G5 and I3 2 can be written as V3 minus V2 times G4 and that is equal to IB this is the current that you are actually injecting in this node so now if I again uh, try to uh, write these equations so what I will do is I will write V1 times 0 because there is no uh, resistance connected for V1 sorry not plus but can be written, written as plus or minus depends then you have uh, minus V2 times G4 and for V3 you have plus G5 plus G4 equal to IB. So this is your third equation for third node. For fourth there is no point in doing it because what we assume is ground here. So, so we do not you know write nodal analysis at this point. So here what you can do now is you can rewrite these equations again just to you know uh, write as a simple thing. So I am writing these nodal equations again. So you have this. So there is no V3 factor here. So it is IA. The second one is V1 G2. Then you have V2 and G2 plus G3 plus G4. And then you have minus V3 times G4 equal to 0. This is from this equation. And the third one is this which is uh, v1 times 0 then you have minus v2 g4 and then you have v3 and uh, g5 plus g4 equal to ib so these are the three equations which we got for node 1 this is for node 2 and this is for node 3 so now you know you have three equations three unknowns so that is uh, you have uh, unknowns are v1, v2 and v3 and you have three equations you can solve it. So the important thing is how to solve it fast. So what we can do is we can make use of matrices. So here uh, you know you can represent uh, these particular set of equations in the form of matrices. So here you know you can write g1 plus g2. This is, uh, this is minus g2. This is 0 and then there you have minus g2 this side. Then you have G2 plus G3 plus G4 and then you have minus G4 here, then you 0 here and then you have minus G4 and then you have G5 plus G4. So this is basically a matrix which when we multiply it with the unknown variables V1, V2, V3, you get the that matrix multiplication equal to IA, 0, IB. So I hope you are aware of, uh, you know, writing all these equations in the matrix form like this. If anyone has any questions, they can easily, you know, solve this matrix and you can see all these three equations can be written by uh, this matrix multiplication with the vector. So these are the unknown vectors that you are trying to find out. So this is basically the list of vectors, unknown vectors. So you are actually finding these unknown variables uh, written in a form of vector format. And these are actually the uh, current sources or voltage sources. We will see various combinations of this. So these are the current sources or voltage sources can be anything. So I will show you that. But right now in this particular thing we have only current sources. So the current sources which are actually active current sources this one and this one. So they will always be appearing on the right side. And this is basically the conductance matrix. We call this as conductance matrix so let us see what this is actually just me just copy i'll just copy this so let me show you what this is so you can see one thing this conductance matrix has first element here this is basically g1 plus g2 so this g1 plus g2 okay so these are node voltages here so this is node 1 this is node 2 and this is node 3 so you can see here this particular element is 1 1 in matrix format you write it as 1 1 right so this is 1 1 so 1 1 means you are actually looking at node 1 and whatever resistances are connected to that you add them up 
so you can see at node 1 you have two resistances r1 and r2 so what you do now is you are actually adding these two up here in the first part similarly here this one is basically 2 2 indexing 2 2 so this means look at node 2 and whatever resistances are connected to node 2 you add them up so this is basically the same you are adding g2 g4 and g3 like this here similarly for this this is basically 3 3 this is indexing 3 3 so that means you add up all the resistances connected to those node 3 so this is r5 and r4 so that is why it is g5 and g4 so this is basically the diagonal matrix points all these uh, are the diagonal entries and you can see the diagonal entries will contain all the sums of individual resistances connected to the nodes let us focus on this now this is basically one two indexing of the matrix so that means you are trying to find out uh, the resistance which is common to one and node two so the resistance which is common to one and node two is r2 so what you do now is you represent with this r2 means g2 and you have to impose a negative sign over there by yourself similarly this is a resistance between node 1 and 3 and you can see now there is no resistance connecting between node and 1 and 3 there is no resistance right if there was a resistance like this then you can say that there is a connection between 1 and 3 but right now in this particular circuit there is no connection so it's zero similarly this one is 1 2 so basically whatever uh, sorry 2 1 so this is basically the same node resistance between node 2 and node 1 so this is r2 so you can write it as g2 here and this one is 2 3 and you can see uh, r4 is the resistance which is common to 2 and 3 so again negative everything other than the diagonal will be negative so this is minus g4 similarly you can write for this you can write it for this and one thing that you can observe is that it's a symmetric matrix so here you can see the elements which you have here are the same here uh, and elements which are having here are the same here and these elements are same to this element so it's a symmetric matrix along the diagonal so this is the basic property of conductance matrix we will see that this is not always true that you will always get a symmetric matrix depending upon the configuration of the circuit that we will look at we will get change in the entry values here we will we will go into the details of all the different aspects that you will find for the for the circuits that i am discussing here but depending upon the circuit topology this conductance matrix will always change and the concept will remain same but the symmetric property may or may not be guaranteed so that is not uh, you know i am uh, that is uh, not guaranteed it can be different for different circuits for but for these type of simple circuits that is having only current sources and resistances symmetry property is definitely there so once you have this you can easily represent it by a capital g matrix which actually is the conductance matrix and the unknown vector capital v which you know this is the vector and when you multiply these two you will get a vector of you have a, a capital i vector which is the this vector this one so now if you want to calculate v it's very simple right you can calculate v as g inverse i right or not you can just uh, post multiply it with matrix g inverse on the left and right side then what you will get is uh, g inverse i as the answer for the voltage values so once you do a g inverse of this conductance matrix uh, this one once you do a g inverse of this conductance matrix you can multiply it with the current matrix current vector which is this one so values of this you already know so you already know these values you know g inverse once you multiply the two together you will get the values of v or not so any confusions here sir yes Sir, but this method will be only applicable if there are three nodes. No, no, this is this is for two nodes also. No problem in that. You will have only these two. No, I mean if there are uh, th four or more. Yes, it is applicable nodes, for that also. But then it it will become complicated. Complicated, you are saying? 
हाँ ये सर इट विल बी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ कंप्यूटिंग दिस जी इनवर्स इट विल टेक टाइम टू कैलकुलेट दैट बिकॉज इनवर्स आर नॉट इजी टू कंप्यूट इन कंप्यूटर बट एज फार एज एज फार एज राइटिंग दीज मैट्रिस इट्स नॉट कॉम्प्लिकेटेड एट ऑल यू कैन विदाउट राइटिंग दीज इक्वेश नाउ आई होप यू कैन Uh, you can straight away write these matrices because i have told all the elements individual elements how they will be written down you can see the diagonal elements will always have summing of the resistances for the individual node and the off diagonal elements will be the interaction of that resistance uh, in between the two nodes so without without writing all these uh, things without writing these efforts you know without writing all these things which i have written over here you can simply write this conductance matrix right without without doing all this so in fact the in fact the computational complexity is reduced instead of increased as you are saying so as you have more number of nodes you can straight away write it in matrix form okay sir yes other than diagonal elements we have to multiply minus yes yes for off diagonal elements this minus will be there sure sir Sir, you told that uh, the uh, sometimes matrix will not be symmetrical. Yes. Sir, but uh, here the G one uh, means the uh, conductance between one and two and two and one will be same only, no? No, no. Thing is, Every... you know, yeah, yeah, that is right. But you know, sometimes you know, I will show you these things. Like whenever circuit will change, the symmetric property may or may not be valid. So we will see that also. Don't worry about it. In our next class, we will discuss that. Okay. but for this particular example its symmetric property is there okay sir yes i am not comfortable in finding inverse so can i use determinant method yeah, for yeah, that yeah 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 that is i have no constraint on that the thing is you know you can use your calculator also to do this there is no you know you can you don't have to calculate it by your hands now so now you are in college you can use calculators the thing is this g inverse has to be calculated and if you know how to do it that's more than enough for me do it with whatever approach you have there is no specific constraint on doing it either by this method or that method i don't care about it okay okay so but sir, yes sir uh, all these topics are in the textbook yes yes all, all, everything is there you can check it from there it is there i am not teaching okay, something sir. different from the text don't worry about it everything is there so but you all agree that if you do uh, uh, this multiplication of g inverse with i you will get v right that that you are all comfortable with it right you will get yes sir uh, so you will get yes. a, you will get yes. Yes. okay fine so you will get a vector of v1 v2 v3 all that values will be calculated as let us say 1 2 3 and once you have these values of 1 2 and 3 then what you can do is as i told you earlier once you have these voltages you can calculate the current flowing in it very easily so once you have this voltage and this voltage you can calculate the current flowing across these nodes so so today i think uh, time is over so i will go more into details of it uh, don't worry about it we will uh, solve some more examples and i will try to show you how this conductance matrix always change depending upon the situation you cannot you cannot always say that it will be symmetric we will discuss that in our next class okay uh, sir yes Oh, so can you show the previous slide uh, uh, where we like the above circuit yeah this one sir. this oh. one uh no sir about this yes this one yes sir. yes yeah, sir. yeah yeah so sir can we leave yes so if you have any questions you were asking something right sir, sir uh, question um, Sir, will we study that uh, control sources uh, structure? Yes, yes, we will study that also. Don't worry, we will do that. 